So, good afternoon. Uh, many thanks, team, for the invitation. It's going to be a slightly different topic. Um, my background is both musicology and computer science. In musicology and computer science, I've been working uh, for quite some years on optical music recognition. Um, and I'm also involved in some digital edition project uh, and the music encoding initiative. <laughs> But actually, quite a quite lo lot of some work is uh, done for the RISM. Um, sorry, one second, I can't see. Uh, for the RISM, which is the Repertoire International des Sources Musicales, uh, which I like to present of one of the very long um, community effort in the humanities. It's a project that started. Uh, in the 50s, right after the Second, Second World War, the German and the French sat together and started to look how to create a resource, a tool for musicologists to know where, are, where the manuscripts are. And uh, the project is still going on, so it's a, it's a very long-standing project. And I'd like to look a bit where we're going, where we can go with this project now. But uh, probably we need to start to look a little bit back where are we coming from? So I framed the past, and as you can see um, from this illustration, the, med the media changed over time. Of course, in the 50s, uh, we used to work with cards and books, and then moved uh, to uh, computers, mainframes, CD-ROMs, all sorts of things, of course. And uh, what's important here to see is that for a very long time, there were always two channels. One where the cataloging would be done in one side, and then the data would be published somewhere else, um, maybe with another media, and the data would go in one direction. And that, that was the way to make all these data available to uh, musicologists. And of course, things change. And um, about 10 years ago, we started to look at options where things could be done in one place where you could do the cataloging and of course in an online environment you may you can make the data available to uh, the users and that took the form of a project which we call MuseCat I'll tell you a little bit more about the history of this project but the idea for this project was precisely to have one single framework to do both the cataloging and the publishing um, was a while ago there were at that time many different library formats, many, many different proprietary formats for this type of project. Um, using Mark XML was a consensus that was uh, chosen also to be able to exchange data with uh, libraries. We wanted to be able to use open source tools. Uh, it's a long-term project. We all know what happens when you get a tool that's developed by a private company that one day is not here anymore. And most importantly, we wanted to have specific uh, features for music, uh, one of them is uh, Incipit Searching, Incipit Display, and the Veroview project, which is used by uh, quite a few projects around here, uh, was developed as part of this uh, initiative. So when I say we, who is that? Uh, Muscat was actually started in the UK, so it was the first project started by the RISM UK. So the RISM is organized, there is a central office in Germany, and then there's a group that are more is loosely um, I mean, independently organized in about 30 countries. There's one in the UK, hosted the British Library, that started this project with an AHRC uh, grant. And the first version of MUSCAT was uh, 10 years ago, in 2007, where they put about 50,000 manuscripts online. And then, in Switzerland, we were looking um, at doing something very similar, so we approached them and basically took it over since then, we've been lucky enough to be funded as a research infrastructure, so an infrastructure for musicology, exactly uh, in the idea to make available data and tools for musicologists. And um, we've developed this MUSCAT further, version 1, 2, and now 3. About 80,000 sources are published through our platform. And it took quite some time. There's a lot of political questions around all that, but eventually, the full community agreed that this option, uh, especially to have this open source platform, was the right option. 
And now the, the, the entire community uses uh, this MuseCat platform to do the cataloging. Uh, since last year, 2016, we migrated about uh, 1 million records and it's running in a server in Berlin. So what really happened here is the data was unlocked because before then it was hidden somewhere in an obscured Oracle database that nobody could access and now uh, it's finally uh, accessible and known and we can start to do interesting things with that. Uh, it's about 10 years now uh, since we started, so we wrote an article at the beginning of the year to look about what are the political, I mean, financial and political questions to do such a development in-house for a project like this versus doing it with uh, maybe a, a project and, and a company to, to develop the database. Uh, it's certainly not quicker to do it in-house. Uh, you don't have many, maybe that many developers that can work in the short term. Uh, on the project, so it takes some time. It's certainly not any cheaper. Uh, we invested a lot of money, but we can see that it's actually much more appropriate for a project like that because we can keep up with new technology, new ideas. We can maintain the tools, we can upgrade the tools, and uh, it's a very positive experience we are we are um, uh, we can now uh, look look at. Um, of course, there is still some fundamental question. Do we, still a pro do we still need a project like the Rhythm? We hear from time to time, well, we don't need that anymore. I mean, the data has been cataloged by the libraries. Uh, there's portals, meta um, aggregators, so we don't need to do that anymore. Uh, well, I thought, okay, let's have a look. What, where would I search if there's nothing like that? Where would I go? And I went here. European I so okay, that's probably a fair place to start. That's an aggregator of uh, libraries. Uh, is, there is European music, so it sounds like a set the right direction. And here you can browse uh, the collection, images, sound recording, text, video, 3D objects, all. Okay, I went for images. I hoped I would get access to scores. And if you search for images, I mean, it was mostly something that could be interesting for music iconography. I could not really access scores, and about 70,000. So I removed one filter here, remove uh, the filter with links to uh, media, and that doubled the results, but not quite the scores I was hoping to see. So I don't want to judge. I mean, it was just a try. Maybe I did something completely wrong. I hope so. but was not really satisfactory. I mean, you cannot really say that that's a good replacement. The other resources, Gallica is great. Um, you get access to all the images. Uh, you can filter by partition, so that's pretty precise. And there are about 40,000 records, so that's pretty valuable. But of course, it's just one national library, so it's not so great for the user to have to search everywhere. Another option I looked at, WordCat, uh, aggregator of library catalogs. I filtered, you can filter by notated score and then made the search between 1400 and 1900, which is more than the, the original boundary of the reason. And that gives me 350 records. Okay, so it's quite, quite something. I'm not sure about the duplicates here because WordCat is aggregating libraries. So anyway, you get a sense of um, do we still need uh, this or not? I'll leave you judge. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure there's quite interesting things we can do with the RISM now. And one of them uh, is related to digitization. RISM is about metadata, so providing simple information about the source. But now libraries do uh, digitize the manuscript digitize their sources. And the great news for us is IIIF. Uh, I'm not, not sure if you're familiar with this, but it's basically an API that makes the images available uh, to other systems. And we already have that in MISCAT. So we can have a short presentation here. This is three copies of one print in our system. And just by giving a link somewhere in the record, which is one link, a JSON manifest. So this is a link to a manifest at the British Library. We can add this in the record. 
uh, and then if we go to the display of this source record we can then see all the metadata that we have for this print but we can also see if we scroll down the full images uh, high resolution and that's also an interesting case because there's another copy of this very print in Harvard and it's the right place where we can have both displayed in uh, one environment for the user with really high resolution um, and all the pages and this without having to download the images without having to go and sign agreement with every separate library basically triple IF is um, solves all this question of the license the library puts what they want up front they decide and we don't need to go and sign an agreement or organize the process it's there it's decided by the API and we can use that and other project can use that of course um, that's one pretty interesting thing coming up for us. Uh, another thing is uh, versioning history. I said before it was in a database. Now we can keep track of all the changes. Uh, if somebody make a change in the source, we see the diff. And of course, there can be small changes, but they can be a source that's attributed later. It's maybe cataloged as anonymous and somebody comes and say, no, I know this is this composer and make the change, we track all the changes and that's a new data that we can um, accumulate. Uh, visualization, we've been looking a lot, it's a huge data set and uh, it's interesting to see that visualization is also a nice way to manipulate the data, to extract the data. If you have a map, a historical map, you can click and maybe extract the data from a certain period of time for a certain region, which would be extremely difficult to do with a uh, text search interface and uh, new features we can add. New Inchipid search. Uh, I told earlier about the appropriateness to be able to develop tool in-house. That's exactly the things we would like to continue doing. Uh, basically integrate MIR research into a production environment. That's the tool developed by Franz Viering in Utrecht. So one colleague of mine went there this spring and we hope to do the last step that's sometimes missing from MIR research that bound to research project where there's great results but just not enough to put it and make it available to the users um, and NGPIT search is one example. And then of course we can think pretty far away there are some upcoming full text search resources for music so we certainly don't need to discuss where, whether Reels has to be full text or not but we can probably link to that or make, make, make the data searchable from there and point. So um, that's pretty much long term, but things that start to be um, possible to um, envisage. Uh, a key challenge that I can see coming, and that's really beyond the rhythm, is the question of the work. There's a lot of initiatives around that. It's a minefield, it's extremely complex, uh, but things ha are, are being done and, and library do that, they go ahead and I think we should not just watch this train and start to think and see what we can do. Um, right is the right approach, as I said, it's a very complex question, we all know that. The IFRBI is there, I've got the feeling that in one sense it's too simple or too complex at the same time. So. What can we do? What can, how can we align with all these, um, as I said, uh, national initiatives that are happening? So people create data, are convinced. There is even VF for that. Is this really the right approach? VF seems to be pretty uh, interesting for people, but we all know that a person is a person or is not that person. Uh, it's not the case for work. So if you look in VF for the works, you'll see all sorts of things. Um, so, big question here. Uh, I've been in touch quite a lot with other R projects, most, mostly the Realm, that has incredible data and uh, would be very interesting to be able to work together. We really keep looking at that, how we can <coughs> aggregate data and come up with ideas. Um, if we think work and inchipits, then there are certainly some work level inchipits somewhere. We don't want to have the inchipit for all the single reprint. 
And actually, that's what's done in a work catalog. Right? In a work catalog, you have a work level in Chipit. So it's some sort of standardized in Chipit. We probably want to have that too. And a more general comment, how can we aggregate external resources and keep, uh, I'd say, the high scientific standard of the risk. Some people might not agree with that. But if we look at the whole data set, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty good quality um, data that we like to keep as, um, as good as possible. So a big question here. And certainly, as I said, we need to do something and not just watch the train. Um, RISM used to be a referencing tool in the old print publication. You would see everywhere, sometimes other catalogs, of course, but in many cases, the RISM number would be used. Why is it not the case anymore? Um, that's certainly a critics we can do, and, and, and do a few critic points from here. Uh, we have uh, permanent URLs, but that's clearly not enough. And I think we should really look at um, trying to make the reason, uh, as I say, a standard referencing tool for sources in the digital, in digital publications. That's, again, a bit lost. People use it as a research tool, and then it's gone. Uh, there's much more we could do here uh, with the data we have. Um, I mentioned the versioning. We should be able to refer to uh, records or the source description at certain times, since now we're keeping everything. Uh, if you make a publication on an anonymous source, and five days later um, the source is attributed to somebody, you probably want your publication still to refer to the anonymous one, or at least the user to know, okay, this uh, source description has changed, and since then this was made. And we can do that, right? It's just finding the right way to to do that. And there's a lot for even for the Reason Project to learn from other initiatives uh, in. In, the, in this domain. And we also have a lot of authorities um, just for the secondary literature, for example, about 30,000 records. And this is a bit unfortunate that it remains unused and unpublished. And I hope that uh, there will be a way to make it available to users and make it used uh, more widely. Uh, things as simple as a casual catalog if you want to refer to Kushel catalog somewhere in the digital world, where would you point, right? It's, it's, it's invented as an authority in the RISM and uh, would be probably interesting for many research projects to be able to, to use that. So a lot of questions here. Um, of course, we stand here, but again, our RISM should not do everything, should not try to do everything, but it should stand as a reference points uh, in this huge uh, landscape. I think we need it more than ever in that regard. Uh, there is some work that's been done by the Bayerische um, Stadtbibliothek uh, about uh, linked data. I'm not sure how widely it's used. I'd be interested to know that at some point. Uh, I'm sure we can do better. If we look in Muscat, um, there is quite some data that we could probably put uh, published in a more um, modern way, so to speak, as triple. If we see a simple a statement that a source is published by a certain person, both are authorities, we've got the ID of the source, we've got the VIAF for the person, everything is there to be made available, uh, not only through a search interface, but uh, for systems. So, to summarize a little bit, I, say, I would say that on the data acquisition side, a lot of effort has been put on the cataloging, really people going in the library, sitting, cataloging the sources. It's an incredible work. I mean, we should not underestimate that. We should not say that we can go away from that. But at the same time, I would say that uh, we should equally consider better managing workflows. There's a lot of musicologists, of scholars who would be ready to contribute, not necessary to make it completely open, but um, control workflows. You can say you can have access to one collection and do some improvement or do the incipit or whatever. Data mining, aggregate data. Uh, there are actually quite interesting research questions, how we can put together these library catalogs and try to um, bring things together. 
And of course, musical work are expected to play a fairly crucial way here, I would say. And for the day delivery, the same thing, the same critics, I would um, raise in a way, it's been too much thought as just a research tool for the musicologists in the same way they would get a book, they now have a library or pack, they can make the search, and that's the end of the story. It's a bit of a shame, and as I said, there's much more we can do uh, for linking with other projects, making suitable human linking in a way, so we can use that in the publication, and of course linked open data and all these authorities that are sadly sitting a little bit hidden somewhere, somehow. Uh, a lot of questions. I'm very interested to have your thoughts, your ideas, your wishes. So I leave a big inter interrogation mark here. Uh, I don't know if you have time for a question or maybe after in the discussion. What users, what researcher will expect from a project like that? And of course, first question, do we still need that? I hope you, you think you agree with me. And um, that's it for me today. Thank you very much.